freezing, freezing today. Um, so I'm in a very autumny mood. So I'm gonna, I've come along to make some leaves. So I have the Tim Holtz die cut for his leaves, um, but th they are all a kind of similar shape, and I wanted some different shapes. So what I've done is I created a template. I can't show you, I haven't printed the template, but it's just a black outline of these leaves. Um, I'm gonna put the template into my Facebook group. So um, if you want to download it and make yours, you can. I cut mine out, as you can probably tell, um, using the Cricut. Um, I didn't do it as a digital item, I've just done it as a cut file. So I can cut these as many times as I like. I've done three sets. So I've cut mine. Um, I'm going to give you the information just in case you too are going to use a Cricut. Um, I have used a 300 GSM uh, watercolour paper, which is this one. Okay, so it's 300 GSM, £140. And there isn't actually a link a profile for that on the Cricut. So I use the 270 GSM cardstock setting and I put the pressure to more and that cut out first time. So they all cut out absolutely perfectly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate these a little bit to, um, you know, just smarten them up a little bit. So, and then we're going to, we're going to work on them with some inks. So what I do is I've just just take one of my leaves and I'm working on the flatter side of sorry about this <laughs> needs a good clean now because I've already done some of this and it's a little bit of a messy job well it is for me anyway um so to make these leaves more interesting the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to cut out some holes um you know like the I can't find mine I've cut out a load um so um this is a Tim Holtz one and I'm going to cut some holes out. Now, they're not going to be as perfect or as pretty or as lovely as the Tim Holtz die cuts, obviously. Um, but we can do this ourselves. So what I do is just cut almost as though you're cutting down to the vein. Because you'd have the vein, the, the stalk, I suppose. <laughs> is it a stalk? You'd have that going down the middle. And then you have the veins coming, um, you know, at, at a point. So I'm just going to cut some holes not too big, but trying to cut as though they would be broken in between those veins. So that's our first cut. And you can cut these however you want. So I'm just using my craft knife and kind of jiggling it about so it's not a particularly straight line. And I'm okay if there's little edges and things like that because once we get working on these, you know they're going to look very different anyway so i'm just going to cut a couple of holes in each one um and i've been doing this for a little while this morning so my hand is i'm afraid at its limit so i'm just going to do one like so and then i'm going to move that aside because that's going to get inky again put my lid on this and then i'm going to show you some that i've already done so the I didn't um, put, I could have put these holes into the, the file. If I did that, however, <laughs> um, one, they would look the same every time. Where if you cut them by hand, they're going to be different every time. And the other reason is, if you don't have a scan and cut or a Cricut and you are going to cut these out yourself, you might not want the, um, the cutouts and that will mean you're going to end up with your ink lines. You can obviously cut round them, but that means, you know, you're going to have to have the same leaf every time. And you, you might not want it. You might not want it cut out. So I've done it as this. And these are the ones that I have just gone through and cut some holes out of. And I think they look pretty cool. Um, I'm going to do... Let's, let's get ready to rock and roll. I'm going to grab a sheet of um this is just greaseproof paper baking sheet and i'm going to put these down i'm 
what I have. I have a, uh, you, you've probably guessed from me um, doing various things that I have only a few distress inks and oxides and whatever. I don't have a huge selection. So I have antique linen, crackling campfire, rustic wilderness, walnut stain, gathered twig. Well, actually, I say I have gathered twig. I have a bottle. There may not be any left in there. And I have bundled sage. So they are the colours I'm using. But I'm just using any green browns yellows oranges kind of that i have you you use whatever you have there is no reason why you have to use exactly the same shades and then i have the mica stain in flickering candle and jack-o-lantern and i have antique bronzed mica spray the mica spray is last these two are much later also at the moment we're just working on the inks but the one thing that I do want to use is fossilised amber distress oxide and I only have this as a pad okay it doesn't really matter I'm just going to take a few and just blot on a little bit of distress oxide and it doesn't matter about the lines don't worry about those this is just our starting point I'm not even going to put yellow on all of them. That will do. That will do. And then we need our spray, water. Just going to give it a spray. And this is an extremely messy process. And I'm just going to literally, you can even blot it onto your greaseproof paper. And that's good because we want ink on the other side eventually. You know, there is no right or wrong way of doing this. And because I've used watercolour paper, I know this is going to be absolutely fine. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, I'm now going to go in with a bundled. No, we're going to start with more yellow. We're going to go antique linen. Just spray a bit here and there. And then we'll have a little bit of bundled sage. And then I'm going to go in with some rustic wilderness, but not going to do every leaf on this, with this. And I'm going to get my crackling campfire. This does not spray particularly well, my one. But the orange, oh, love it in the leaves. Once they're done, they look so cool. Okay, now from, for a moment, I'm actually going to add a little bit of orange to this one. For a moment, I'm going to leave these as they are. I'm just going to actually give that one a little bit of a brown. Let's put the brown in. Why not? <laughs> Last time I did this, I dried it in between. This time I'm not going to bother. Let's just go for it. The whole, the whole idea of this is to just be quite random and not necessarily end up with um, the colours in the places you think they might be. So I'm going to dry these. They're going to take me a minute, so I'll be back. These are semi-dry. Now, I've what I'll do is I take my tweezers and I'm just going to um, tap these on some of the ink that's underneath, okay, to just pick up some ink on the back of my leaves. So... Um, Right, now I'm going to move these aside and get myself a dry piece of um, greaseproof paper. And I'm turning these over now because obviously they're still wet. I'm going to use my tweezers actually. Still wet on the other side. Okay, now I'm going to grab this, flip it over, just give those a little push pick up a little bit more of that ink and now I'm just going to dry this side so where I've got little bits of white I'm just going to finish off and just rub them across the last of this ink 
I don't mind a small amount of white, but I don't want huge patches. Right, I think these are all ready for the next. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in that leaf that I actually really liked and didn't want to do any more to that. So these are this is all the backsides or what we started off as the backside. This is the smoother side of my um, water watercolour paper. Now I'm just going to drop some water on here. Only a tiny bit. And then I've got my really tatty old baby wipe I'm just gonna just to give these a little bit more texture I mean we're not getting too much um, activation because some of that yellow is not really shown through that oxide and then I'm gonna do the same on this side I mean, this is why I use watercolour paper, because they really go through some wetting and drying. And I wanted something fairly sturdy, fairly thick. Right, another dry. Okay. What I've done is I've picked my favourite side of the leaf. Um, because that's the side that I'm going to have facing up. So now I'm going to go in with some of these... Um, distress mica stains well I say some two jack-o-lantern and flickering candle so just give me a second these do need um, a really good shake and I think I'm now done so I'm going to go in with the lighter one first this just gives them such a lovely sheen um, because of that mica I don't go over the top with this now the jack-o-lantern this is very similar to the orange um, that I used before the dye and these two colors are extremely um, similar okay so another dry now because I have some of this lovely stain I'm just gonna do what I did before and dip these leaves into that just moving them around a little bit so now we're going to have a little bit on the back and that's it's wonderful that you just oh see now I, I preferred that side and now I not like that side they just look great I think Right, and last of all, I'm going to go in with a bit of gold. And um, this is just mica spray. You don't have to. Okay, and um, I can't believe how much of this I have used. But any kind of gold, Lindy's gold, um, if you have that. Okay, so this is our last dry at this stage. I'm happy with them. But I don't think that I have enough darker spots on some of these. So what I'm going to do is, I know I said I was done, but that was obviously a little bit of a lie. Um, I'm going to take my greaseproof paper and I'm going to put a bit of the darker green I have down. A little bit of water. And I'm just going to touch some of these leaves into this ink just to get a bit more green going on. Now a bit of walnut stain. So my leaves are all dry. And they look pretty awesome as they are. But I'm not leaving them as they are. Hello. Hello. Oh. Looks like it's snack time for cats, so I'll be right back. Come on. Um, when I did this last time, <laughs> um, I didn't quite allow my leaves to dry. And you will see what happened. So I've got my embossing ink 
and I have um, this is Seth Aptor's beeswax okay uh, embossing powder you could use a clear embossing powder or even a brown or a white depending on what look you're going for so I don't want the whole oh, yeah, see what happens I don't want the whole of my leaf inked. I'm just going to try and aim for the edges. Now, some of it's going to get in the middle. That's fine. But I'm just aiming for the edges. You could use a dabber, which I might have to do because there's not a lot of ink left in this pad. And then I'm going to put it in here give it a shake about pick it up and that looks okay but it's not got a whole lot of powder on there so let's do this one gone quite heavy around there the inside of my pad is quite dry I have a little bit around the outside still this one is pretty pretty embossed actually <laughs> yeah I'm just not picking up any ink this is pretty dry now um, so I'm gonna grab my greaseproof paper and I'm gonna move on to my dabber um, I am a bit concerned that I'm going to end up with ink and paint on my dabber, but that's that's how it is. Right, so I've got five done. I would normally do quite a lot, um, but we're going to just heat emboss these and we will see how they look. Yep, I, I have a burning problem, so um, I'm going to let that completely cool. And that's quite a shame because I haven't actually done a whole lot of leaves. <laughs> I've done five. I, I mean, it was going at it something yesterday, um, but I still didn't do, it wasn't hundreds. Um, so if I can pick this one up. So I like the fact that it's not completely embossed. I like it just around the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on and finish my leaves. And I'll be back to show you all once I've done them, if I don't burn the house down. So my leaves are done. Um, I just, I do really love the fact that you get these different textures if you don't emboss the whole leaf and you just emboss around the edge. Um, and obviously you get that kind of dappled look anyway with the beeswax unless you put loads and loads of layers on. So I'm really happy with them. Um, these will be in um, a journal that I am making currently. I really hope you like them and I hope it's given you some ideas because 
the October challenge. I don't usually do it until the second week of the month um, or the last two weeks of the month. But the challenge for the Foxy Crafters for October is to create something with leaves. You don't have to use the template, but obviously it's there in the kit in the in the group if you want. I have a couple more ideas of things that I would like to do with these leaves. Um, so I might pop back with a video number two shortly um, and look at different techniques. But um, there is a full month for this challenge. It's something with leaves. Anything you want, but it must include leaves. Please feel free to download and use the template if you wish. Um, and I will be back really soon with another video.